Uh, the main wood in, in Wales was alder, and people go, oh, why aren't you using alder? It's the best wood. No, it was, it was commercially available. Uh, this alder's got several advantages. Dry alder will work as well as green sycamore. It works well dry. Um, if it gets really dry, you just put a bit of wet sacking over it, allow it to absorb a little bit of moisture and, and then use it. It's cheap. It takes a nail well without splitting. And it's generally easy to work. Uh, it's, it's the only thing it is, is it's, it's, it doesn't last very well if it's constantly wet. In West Wales, on the bottom end of the Tyvee, they use sycamore. It lasts longer. It's just lasts longer in the wet climate. But it wasn't used in England. It was only sent, only, it's used in England now. A lot of the clog makers use it, but I was the only guy using it for years. They still don't seem to understand that you carve it green. I've, I've had arguments with guys that are now not doing it anymore, and they're going, they've got it drying out for months. And you're going, why have you got it drying out for months? Oh, so, you know, well, you don't. You do it all green. You can't do that cut here when it's dry. It, it tends to chunk. It doesn't want to do it. It's too hard. It's, it's like going through concrete. It just, it just breaks rather than, than, than cuts. It gets very, very hard sycamore. This is half, all right? I split, I, I chainsawed this this morning. I split it. There was a crack in it, so I followed the crack. Um, okay, so I split that down with a fro. Um, and then I spent about, I don't know, five or six minutes, ten minutes, cutting, cutting this out. So this has just been done with a blocker in, well, we'll see what we can do, this way. See, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting one plane. So I'm trying to get that. I don't want it screwing around. I just want it one, one flat surface. And then you work off that. You go, okay, that's all level. I've got this card that I made up. Now, her foot isn't this shape, but with the best will in the world, you don't make shoes foot shape. You make shoes to be comfortable and to look nice, it's not the same as being the same shape as the foot. She's probably wider here, but when you put the foot in a curve, it becomes narrower in the toe box. So you don't follow it exactly, and you need to undercut here and here, on shoes, on clogs, on anything. If you don't undercut there, you don't center the foot, and then it'll wobble around here and here. So you undercut it slightly, and then you have to get the toe shape looking you know, how they want it. They might want a very broad toe. They might want a, what's called a duck toe, which is uh, almost like a, a duck beak, comes up to a point. This is slightly pointed common round. It's, it's pretty average. So looking at that, that's the shallow end. We'll do that. Now that's the other half. So I need, that needs to go that way because it's upside down at the moment. And what we do, we just draw around this pattern I so carefully made. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but you've got a pattern on that. And then I'll hack into it with the blocker. So.
And when I when I cut down, I tend to break the knife open by just twisting it there, so I can get it out again. So we just cut along the back. It's fast, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it, it it is fast, but it gets, uh, unless you do it all the time, it quickly gets slow, unfortunately, because you're going backwards and forwards. Uh, I've just got one type of last I use. I did have two. I saw one to a chap down in Kent that wanted to learn to do it. Um, I saw him a set of knives. He has made stuff, but he said he hasn't made them with, this, with these. He said it's too difficult. But... Basically, I've I've got one curve imprinted on my brain, so and on this one I'm 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 trying to roll it in a bit. It's not a straight line. I want a particular curve, so I'm looking across. And then uh, you cut the heel. I use a little silky, which is actually distributed just down the road at Mansell Lacey. But so just <laughs> lovely little knife. Japanese only cuts on the pull, so it's not very traditional, really. So you cut back into here. And it's, you have to make this curve slightly concave or straight. If you make it convex, it looks lumpen. See, that's a lump there, not, not good. So, it's better, that's better. Um, we've, we've ended, you, you tend to do it in a pair. So I take that one down to the same as this one. Um, and then when I've got them both, with the same roll, the curb starting in the same place, the arch and the step here the same, the heels roughly the same, you know, that, that, a mirror image in fact. Then, then um, you can do a bit more. Not great because the knots just appeared, but um, it might disappear again. Depends how much we cut away. I'll leave it for now. No, oh, yeah, a bit more is going to come off, so I just take a bit. You got a lot of leverage here because it's the bit of the knife I'm using is right against the hook. So you're really not putting much force into it. The only thing it's bad on is the wrists. Because you're doing a lot of control with the wrists. And this is the other end, you see I've got less less control now. That'll do. You take off, just trip it a bit off here. The, the knives were made up north. They're, even the Welsh, right out in the countryside, tended to use this one. They made the other ones, but they used this one. They couldn't make anything as good as this. Um, and it's a laminate. So it's a raw iron handle and hook. And then it's scuffed over here, folded over, folded over here, and this is two piece. This is, uh, you can see here, it's uh, Henry Carter, Hyde Burton, and you see the, the colour difference. Now that's 
uh, high carbon steel and that's raw iron and the problem is that that has quite a low melting point and that has quite a high melting point so when you try and weld them together you're at the extreme range of of the of what you can do they're just about managing to to, to meld with each other but and it's only it's about eighth of an inch it's only maybe a tenth thick and it just sits on the back but if you have the whole blade um, in high carbon it's brittle so you need you need a, a softer back piece to uh, provide strength really to make it more make it stronger it's funny enough the harder you get the, the weaker it is to some extent Henry Carter just made clog knives nobody else made any clog knives uh, uh, for this 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 is uh, the blocker or stock knife uh, the because of the misuse recently of the terms uh, mainly by uh, the Pole Turners Association uh, people keep re referring to the all of them as stock knives but that's not the case this is a stock knife the other ones are the hollower and the gripper bit. Um, but this is sp specifically just a clog knife. It's, it's not a general knife. It's not to make pegs. It's not to do any other carving work. It's a clog knife. And the, the handle is canted off at an angle, so it's not in line. And it's very fine. And the chamfer's on the back. And the reason the chamfer's on the back is so I can do this curve. If it's not on the back, I can't do a concave curve. 